Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this video, I'll be looking at new features introduced to the Maso G3 and G3 Touch in the latest version of software. There are quite a lot of new features that have been added. Please note that some of these features will be add-ons that need to be purchased, while others will come as standard and don't need to be purchased. The biggest feature to be added is multi-head. What's multi-head? Well, it's a bit like multi-spindle, where you can have more than one spindle on your machine. But why call it multi-head? While all spindles are heads, not all heads are spindles. For example, this head is a laser. The first multi-head we're going to look at is multi-spindle. This consists of a main spindle with up to four additional spindles, which means you can have a total of five spindles mounted on your machine and can swap between the five tools very quickly as needed. But what happens if you need more tools? Well, no problem. The main spindle can be an auto tool change spindle, which will allow you access to an additional 100 tools bringing you to a total of 104. If you need more than that, please send me a photo of your machine because I would really like to see it. If your main spindle is not an auto tool changer, then you can still do manual tool change as well. Each multi-head has an up-down output to move the head into position, and in the case of spindles, you can also switch the VFD from one spindle to the next as required. Each head has positional offsets, which will establish its position with respect to every other head on the machine. And once the machine is homed, each head's position will be known. The next multi-head is laser. No, um, not this one. This one. It's a crosshair laser, which you can use to align your material, zero your X and Y axis, and do dry runs. In the dry run mode, you can run your G-code and the machine will move in the X and Y direction, but it won't move the Z-axis. It won't run the spindle, won't change tools, turn on the coolant. You can run your file, check if it remains on your material, or check the motion to make sure it's what you expect. If you zero the axis in dry run laser or any multi-head, the coordinates will be updated to all of your multi-heads. Next, we have the cutting or engraving laser. This is my personal favourite. And this is a standard feature. Mine's attached to the Z-axis, so it can move up and down. You can use that to get focus, and can use it to machine 3D projects, such as this 3D Tiger engraving I made using the laser module in Vetrix software. You can use the laser to do grayscale or dithered engraving, which is ideal for engraving photos. You can do line engravings as well as cutting. And when teamed up with specialist laser software such as Lightburn, you have a very powerful addition to your machine. Plasma is the next multi-head. Up until now, mill and plasma software have been two separate versions, and you had to change software if you wanted to change between machines. Going forward, both will use the same software, and to change between mill and plasma, you just need to choose the head you want to use. Thanks to requests from users, Maso has added the Maso Plasma DTHC module. Designed from the ground up, it integrates with Maso to provide improved plasma cutting solution. You can set up the initial parameters for your cut using a dedicated G-code at the start of your file, and make changes to the THC parameters directly from the Maso screen. The Maso Plasma DTHC connects to the divider on your plasma unit, and you can set the divider ratio to match your machine using the switch on the side. Functionality that used to be done through G-Code has now been automated, such as probing at the start of your cutting cycle and setting cutter height after probing is complete. Changes can be made during cutting using the new plasma tab on the F2 screen. Simply type in the new value and hit enter. 
Our next multi head is OxyTorch. This one is still in development at the time of this video. And after that, we have WaterJet. I'd be lying if I said I knew anything about that, but other than uh, I would want one. The next multi head is the Scribe tool. This is used for marking and engraving metal surfaces. It has outputs to move the scribe up and down, as well as turn it on and off as needed. And next we have two pen tools, also used for marking material. And with two pens, you can have two colours. The pens would be sprung loaded and move up and down as required. Of course, there's no need to turn them on and off. Lastly, there's the camera. This one again is still in development at the time of this video. It could be used for viewing your cut or to zero your X and Y axis. There have been major improvements to the Masho visualizer. With the introduction of laser, it was important to be able to see what you were engraving. And if you simply look at the toolpaths, all you get to see is a blob. At the top right of the visualizer, you'll now see a button called Depth Map. When you press this, it will change the display from a 2D view where you only see the X and Y toolpaths, and now you'll see the toolpaths overlaid with the laser intensity shown in different shades. So here we go from one blob to another. This new function carries over to other heads as well. You will now be able to view your toolpaths as 2D and also be able to see the 3D ones as well. In your project uh, is a combination of both, you can switch between them as needed. Last but not least, we've added a QR code scanner. You can use a standard wired QR scanner such as this or a suitable wireless one, though you can't use Bluetooth. With this add-on feature, you'll be able to use it to scan a QR code, which will load your G-code re file ready to run. This is great for production work, where you have a job sheet, and by scanning the code, you'll know you're loading and cutting the right part. Masso Link has been updated to create QR codes for you, which you can import into your job sheet, print or even save to your smartphone ready to scan as needed. There are numerous other small additions that have been uh, added, but I've only really mentioned the main ones here. In the meantime, all that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and hit that bell for notifications of all new videos as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.